नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आवर डिस्कशन एंड प्रेजेंटेशन फ्रॉम योर साइड विदाउट डिले जस्ट वी स्टार्ट फर्स्ट स्टर्डे डिस्कशन देन एज पर शेड्यूल प्रेजेंटेशन वन बाई वन होपफुली की ऑल आर कंफर्टेबल और टूडे प्रेजेंटेशन बिफोर स्टार्टिंग रेगुलर सेशन स्टडे टॉपिक स्टार्ट ऑन द ब्लॉक चेन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड दिस टॉपिक डिलीवर बाई आवर यंग इंजीनियर मिस्टर नवीन नागा सर फ्रॉम बेंगलोर सम स्मॉल प्रेजेंटेशन रिगार्डिंग स्टडे सेशन फ्रॉम माई साइड first uh, uh, what is the blockchain technology everybody well known now a small video for all of you what is blockchain blockchain is a shared and immutable record of transactions or ledger that facilitates in the process of creation verification and updation of records in decentralized manner in blockchain the data is stored in form of chain of blocks which are linked to each other more on that later how blockchain technology differs from traditional database in traditional database the data is stored on a central server which is controlled by a single entity or a group of people this provides more power in the hands of entity who controls the data than other stakeholders this system may lead to issues such as privacy breach abuse of authority or hacking in blockchain the data is stored in the form of distributed ledger the ledger is distributed among all the network nodes present at various geographical locations this ensures that no one have a complete control over the data of blockchain and any changes in data can only be carried out after consensus among the network nodes is reached more on network nodes in a moment now for better understanding of topic let's discuss what are hashing functions and what are network nodes what is a hashing function hashing function is an algorithm which when given an input of any data it outputs a unique code of fixed length this unique code is called hash imagine hashing function as a machine you input a data into it and it outputs a hash of fixed length For example, Bitcoin blockchain uses SHA-256 hashing algorithm. Now let's discuss network nodes. What are network nodes? Network nodes can be called infrastructure of a blockchain. Blockchain creates blocks of data and these blocks of data are stored on network nodes. So network nodes can be called distributed servers of blockchain network. that are controlled by multiple participants nodes can be any kind of computing device such as computers laptops or big servers when a new block of data is created it is broadcasted to network nodes for validation based on the legitimacy of data the block is verified by the network nodes and it is added to the blockchain now let's discuss how blockchain works in blockchain the data is stored in the form of blocks each block contains data hash of previous block and hash of its own hash of a block is calculated by inputting the data of that block into a hashing function 
Hence, when someone tries to change the data of this block, its hash changes and it is no longer the same block. As the previous block hash information is also stored in the block, its location in blockchain is fixed and cannot be changed. This makes it very difficult for any hacker to change the data inside blockchain. Also, due to decentralized nature of blockchain, copy of blockchain data is stored on different network nodes. If one of the nodes of blockchain is attacked and taken over, the other remaining nodes will detect the malicious activity and prevent it from causing any further damage. Due to this immutable nature of blockchain, this technology can be used to handle sensitive information such as secure sharing of medical data, personal identity security, money transfer and payment processing, supply chain monitoring, copyright and royalty protection. Now let's understand blockchain transaction process by using an example of Bitcoin transactions. Imagine there are two friends, Jack and Andrew. Andrew needs one Bitcoin for his blockchain based business. He asks his friend Jack for one Bitcoin as a loan. Jack has two Bitcoin in his wallet and agrees to give loan of one Bitcoin to Andrew. When Jack initiates the transaction of Bitcoin transfer, the transaction will first be validated by network nodes. Network nodes will check if Jack really have one Bitcoin in his wallet. As in this case, his wallet has two Bitcoins. The transaction will be approved by network nodes. In case if Jack didn't has one Bitcoin in his wallet and tried to send one Bitcoin to Andrew, the transaction would have been rejected by validator nodes. All of these transactions and validations are being carried out in a decentralized way, meaning no one entity or person is controlling the transactions or data. This makes blockchain networks more secured and resistant to attacks. Thank you for watching this video. For more amazing videos, Okay, uh, this is a small video from uh, our collection for all of you and uh, some uh, more in information regarding uh, this uh, uh, study presentation. So just I create one question for all of you and answer also. Is blockchain technology transforming mobile application development? So this is a summarize for all of you. It's hard to believe that uh, blockchain technology is only a decade old. It has already transferred many industries in such a short time and uh, mobile application development is no expectation. Many experts believe that uh, blockchain will completely overhaul the mobile application development process uh, this year already completed this uh, actually this blog developed by me too i write a lot of thing in my blog so just i taken this information from my blog site uh, different point regarding this uh, first is the enable secure transaction due to the mobile application one of the most significant advantage a blockchain technology is that enable secure transaction already we seen in the video this is the storage on a centralized decentralized network and it is very difficult for hacker to tamper with it this make blockchain based mobile application ideal for business that need to conduct secure transaction such as bank and e-commerce store. Also, since blockchain is tamper-proof, business can ensure that the data stored on the network is accurate and up-to-date. Second point, uh, provide security and privacy. Another advantage of blockchain technology is that it provides enhanced security and 
privacy. Since all data is stored on a decentralized network, business can ensure that their data is safe from hackers. Also, uh, since blockchain use cryptography algorithm, data stored on the network is highly secure. Additionally, uh, since all transactions are transparent, business can track their data and ensure that is used appropriately. Increase reliability and transparency due to the blockchain. Data main region is the decentralized network and uh, business can ensure that the data is accurate and up to date. All transactions are transparent. Business can track their data and ensure that use appropriately. Repeat again. Easy to implement by understanding technology is uh, not familiar, but uh, when we go for implementation, blockchain technology, so it is the big advantage that implementation of the blockchain technology is uh, easy to implement. Many platform provide business with the infrastructure to develop and deploy blockchain based application. Additionally, many resources are available to help business get started with blockchain technology. Easy to access to tool and resources. Another advantage of blockchain technology is that it provides business with easy access to tool and resources. Many platforms provide business with the infrastructure to develop and deploy blockchain based application. Additionally, many resources are available to help business get started with blockchain technology. Hence, business can get started with blockchain quickly, easy and fastly we can implement. Fix in application purchase. In application purchase are major problem for mobile application developer. Since all data is stored on a centralized server, it is very easy for hacker to tamper with it. This can lead to the loss revenue and decreases user trust. However, by using blockchain technology such as cryptocurrency, business can fix this problem. By storing all data on a decentralized network, business can ensure that it is safe from hacker. Additionally, business can track their data and ensure that it is being used appropriately by using transparent transaction. And final point uh, we can, uh, from my side, make your password leak through. Advantage of this is the blockchain technology. Uh, data is stored on the decentralized network and it is complicated for hacker to tamper with it. This makes blockchain based application ideal for the business that need to conduct secure transactions such as bank and e-commerce store. Also since blockchain is tamper proof, business can ensure that the data stored on the network is accurate and up to date. This uh, uh, seven point uh, conclusion regarding mobile application for blockchain technology. And nowadays, after when technology update day by day, so a lot of our export day in the market share their thought, their thinking. So some uh, blockchain code by Malaysian Swan here, the blockchain allow our smart device to speak to each other better and faster. And uh, Balaji Srinivasan saying that he, the internet is programmable information. The blockchain is the programmable security. And uh, freed extortion, uh, everything will be tokenized and connected by the a blockchain one day. So a lot of uh, different different thought regarding blockchain technology in nowadays everyone 
uh, sharing and give the idea. Uh, this is the just the conclusion regarding uh, the third and upcoming session. And now time for presentation and more added and same by Silas sir. Are you there? Uh, yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible and a warm welcome on behalf of LTTC and our participants and friends. Uh, Silas sir, first starting today presentation and uh, he is also some focus on blockchain technology. Uh, you are welcome, sir. And uh, I hand over to session to you. If you are comfortable now. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Request to uh, your video on, so it is more easy for capturing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, you can now share the presentation. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Uh, is it visible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, first of all, good, uh, good morning to you all. Uh, my name is Sajish Tital. I am from Bhutan. So today I'll be talking on blockchain uh, technology. Since uh, yesterday it was uh, discussed in detail, so I won't be going in detail, but uh, just some fun facts and uh, uh, general thing about blockchain I'll be discussing today. Uh, I hope uh, I'm audible. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, what is blockchain? Uh, Yesterday it was discussed uh, very much in detail. So I'll be just uh, uh, putting a few points here. So as you know, a blockchain is a decentralized, distributed and public digital ledger consisting of block which cannot be altered, uh, which is quite secure and it is organized in a chronological order. Similarly, a blockchain contains a cryptographic hash of previous block, a timestamp and a transition. The below diagram shows the uh, how hash uh, keys are I mean, defined. I, the same diagram was uh, presented yesterday in detail. So I think it's not required to talk in detail as well. It is also a real-time ledger of anything that can be recorded, uh, such as financial transaction, contracts, physical assets, supply chain, etc. But there is no one person or organization in charge of this entire uh, chain. Some fun facts about uh, blockchain since this uh, there since there was a lot of uh, research going on before 2008 on this uh, uh, technology but uh, in 2008 a group of people with a pseudonym Sat sato c nakamoto he popularized uh, blockchain to serve a, a public uh, transition ledger for cryptocurrency so he was the uh, i mean this group of people were the one who brought uh, blockchain into limelight. Uh, as you know, blockchain can be either public or private, which means uh, pub public blockchain in a public uh, blockchain. Anybody can uh, join and participate in the activity. Whereas in private blockchain, only selected uh, few people can participate and uh, the operator of that block, uh, chain has full access to override, edit or delete necessary entries on the blockchain. Uh, as you all know, blockchain is gaining quite popularity and uh, it has a lot of uh, uses as well. Some of them being uh, supply chain, digital identity, healthcare, voting, international payment. But uh, among uh, these all, cryptocurrency and smart contracts are some of the popular technology. Now, what is cryptocurrency? Uh, as you know, cryptocurrency is a digital payment system that does not uh, rely on any kind of bank to verify the transition. Uh, it doesn't require a third party to uh, verify the transition. It is an encrypted data stream that donates, uh, denotes a unit of uh, currency. So uh, it is uh, monitored and organized by a peer-to-peer -peer network called blockchain, which also serves as a secure ledger for transition uh, uh, using um, uh, this, uh, this cryptocurrency, digital currency, you can buy, sell, do any kind of uh, transfer. 
Um, from the starting point, that is uh, 2008, when it was uh, first conceived, uh, from that uh, point till now, we have more than 8,000 plus different cryptocurrency in the world. The first uh, cryptocurrency was Bitcoin, which was uh, founded in 2009, and it is uh, one of the best known cryptocurrency as of today. Uh, apart from these, uh, some of the most popular uh, cryptocurrencies are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, etc. Uh, I have this uh, small uh, um, video uh, which shows uh, how cryptocurrency works uh, using this currency, how we can uh, um, buy things uh, online uh, in, in the digital thing. Please enjoy this video. Any? Uh, sir, uh, I think uh, your uh, presentation we can't see. So kindly go to the again uh, share buttons and uh, share screen. Then we can able to see what are you saying. You're not able to see this. Ah, yeah, screen. only, only, sir. Your uh, blockchain is like basically you share on only PPT. Okay. So again, you go to share screen option and select first number option share uh, screen. Screen, yes, yeah, sir. Complete first number, yes. Okay. Then able to you can see very here. Yes, now. Are you able to see? Yes, a smart contract. Uh, your PPT. Now, so this video yes. I'll play it again. Ah, uh, yeah, again, yes. But first, uh, first, uh, before starting, first uh, one more option. You go to the uh, uh, top most more button, right corner is available. Share sound of your computer. Then we are able to listen your sound. Otherwise, only video you can see. First, we go top most view option. Right, there are more option is available. Click on yes. that more, and there one option you can see uh, share sound computer sound okay are you getting yes ah, so now, now play your video please okay so i'm i can playing the video yes yes there's bitcoin are you able to hear yes yes, yes thank you okay. so just what is cryptocurrency and how does it work essentially it's digital money that is bought and sold online there are no bills or coins it's not based on another asset like gold and it doesn't go through traditional financial institutions like banks. Instead, these currencies operate in a completely decentralized system that uses so-called blockchain technology to track transactions. To see how this works, let's look at how you buy something with cryptocurrency. Say that Alice wants to buy a bike from Dan using Bitcoin, her cryptocurrency of choice. Alice begins by logging into her Bitcoin wallet with a private key, a unique combination of letters and numbers. With a traditional financial transaction, the exchange gets sent to banks on each side who record the money being subtracted from one account and added to another. But remember, in this scenario, there are no banks or middlemen. Instead, Alice's transaction is shared with everyone in the Bitcoin network. These networked computers add Alice's transaction to a shared list of recent transactions, known as a block. Every 10 minutes, the newest block of transactions is added on, or chained to all the previous blocks. That's how you get a blockchain. To ensure that each block of transactions on the chain is verified, a subset of Bitcoin's network joins a race to solve a very difficult math puzzle. And if they solve it first, their record of the block of transactions becomes the official record. They're rewarded with Bitcoins of their own, and the network gets a new block on the chain. This entire process is known as mining, but instead of chipping away at rock, you're solving complex puzzles. The fact that many computers are competing to verify a block ensures that no single computer can monopolize the Bitcoin market. To ensure the competition stays fair and evenly timed, the puzzle becomes harder when more computers join in. The Bitcoin protocol says mining will continue until there are 21 million Bitcoins in existence. That's set to happen around 2140, if Bitcoin lasts that long.
Thank you, sir. Uh, so this is how Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency works. Okay, so next thing uh, uh, is a smart contract. So smart contract, uh, as per Wikipedia, it's a smart, uh, it's a computer program which is intended to automatically execute, control, or document legal, uh, legally relevant events and action according to terms of contracts or agreement. In other words, it is just line of code which can contain variables and function to perform certain tasks, which can be later executed after deploying in a blockchain network. So these smart contracts are built on Ethereum crypto using a Solidity program. Yeah, Ethereum is a, another kind of a cryptocurrency, which is decentralized open source blockchain with the smart contract functionality to create a decentralized application, which is also known as DApp. Ether is a native cryptocurrency of Ethereum. Uh, decentralized app or uh, DApp. It is a computer application that runs on distributed computing system, uh, also a blockchain network. Uh, a DApp will require some intermediate wallet service to connect the application to blockchain network. So commonly used wallet service is uh, Metamask, which is uh, also available as extension or add-on for Firefox. Metamask uh, is a cryptocurrency wallet for storing cryptocurrencies. So it is uh, uh, also available as browser extension or mobile apps. Uh, Metamask equips you with uh, everything you need to manage your digital assets. So there is this uh, a term called gas, uh, which refers to fee or pricing value. Uh, in order to successfully conduct a transition or, a de uh, or deploy a smart contract to blockchain or execute contract functions on Ethereum blockchain, you need to pay a certain uh, fee, which is also known as a uh, uh, gas fee. Uh, it also helps uh, keep Ethereum network secure. Uh, that's it, sir. Uh, my presentation is uh, finished. Hello. Hello, sir. Thank you, Salas, sir. Very nice presentation yeah, and a small video. Thank you, and uh, thank you to because you are uh, prompt uh, result and uh, presentation and uh, next presentation from uh, our Sri Lanka team Priya ma'am are you there are you ready for the next presentation yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes yes I am welcome to you and uh, your topic is uh, information security and data breaching and hacking so uh, you uh, your uh, are you going this presentation alone by your team uh, with my team with my team okay 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 so. i'll share the screen sir okay okay no problem so you can share a screen and on behalf of ltc and uh, our repeat participant and <laughs> friend, a warm welcome to your team for today presentation and now you can start thank you So hope you all can see the screen. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Very nice. Okay. okay. Good morning, everyone. So as Sri Lankan team, uh, Priya, Chamo, then myself, I'm Tushari. We are going to present information security, data breaching, and hacks. So uh, for the presentation, our today content is, first of all, we discuss about security domains. Then we just brief uh, about malware, what is malware and some examples. Thereafter, we focus into our main topic, recent attack incidents uh, nowadays. And finally, we discuss about how to mitigate this type of malware attacks. So first of all, we focus to the security domains. Actually, security domains are determining factors of information security. So here we consider five domains. 
So first of all, if we are uh, dealing with information security, the first domain is to identify, properly identify what are the attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities available in the industry, actually with the new technologies and new uh, devices. Thereafter, we have to focus on architecturing, actually design proper solution for identified uh, attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities. So under that design, there after, uh, after designing, actually design and implementation uh, go simultaneously. So design and implementation domains, we have to focus uh, each and every points of information security threatened that like uh, endpoints and security codes, cryptography, or even physical security as well. So the next domain is the operation and incident response. While we are practicing those uh, security solutions, we have to maintain the incident response to continuous monitoring, analyzing, and what are the, uh, that, uh, like, uh, that, uh, what is the, uh, some uh, issues in the system. So we can, uh, it's uh, actually preventive action of this information security uh, functioning. So under that, we can, uh, maintain the response, incident response is very important under that uh, particular domain. Then final one is the governance risk and compliances. Under that, we can, uh, that according to our incident responses, we can collect a new identification and we can share those things with international bodies, regulation bodies like uh, uh, SOX and uh, uh, FDPR likewise, right? So the international bodies relevant to this information security provide proper solution and aware about these uh, new things to other parties as well. So this is the brief about security domain. Now let's move to the malware. Malware is actually malicious software that de purposely designed to harm the system. That is malware. So there are a few examples here, popular examples. You all can see there that viruses, worm, progen hoses, spyware, and so on. Let's see one by one. So as first step, we focus to viruses. Actually, uh, past few day, few months, uh, we faced that coronavirus effect. So we all aware that corona is spread be uh, because human gathering is there, and also no preventive. Actions are there. Same way in computers, viruses spread throughout the system uh, with the use of human actions. So if we don't have proper solution, proper virus protection methods, so virus can spread out everywhere and harm our system. So that is the action of virus and how to spread. It cannot spread its own. It needs human activities like uh, inflected email attachment and inflected program or even inflected storage device like our USB devices to all those stuff they can spread here and there and harm to our system that is called virus malware. Then if we consider worms while comparing worms and viruses they both give the same attack but that spreading method is different that worm can spread its own like crawling worms, right? So if network is there, no proper uh, information security functioning is there, so worm can go everywhere here and there and uh, spread that harm to the overall system. That's how worm act. Then Trojan horses. So Trojan horses actually same as the Greek myth. In Greek myth, actually there is a big horse there and that people in the kingdom stolen that uh, horse to their area and actually around midnight that uh, that all the soldiers in that uh, horse spread everywhere and uh, start war and uh, start war. So same thing happened in the computer system that something uh, very special things, attractive things appears in our screen like screen servers, attractive mice pointers or even education uh, that software like things that we are waiting for. So accidentally we click on that that uh, that malware, that Trojan host spread out everywhere and attack our system. So it is also spread because of the human activities, right? Mainly cyber attacks go through this Trojan horses normally be called as rats as well. Then spyware. Spyware, yeah, spyware is also a malware and it installs our computer system without knowing the owner. Then collect all sensitive data like uh, passwords, PIN numbers, credit card numbers, and forward it to the third party. So it can harm our uh, 
systems actually uh, they can uh, make some illegal things so the main example for spyware is the keylogger so it, it can record each and every keys we press so according to that uh, pattern they can attack our system then ransomware that is very popular thing in industry actually they kidnapping our data and demanding for financial things demanding the ransom so there are two types of ransomware so locker ransomware and crypto ransomware under locker ransomware they lock our system to unlock they demand in for money but in crypto ransomware they encrypt our data so to decrypt we need that key for that key they demand for money so that is how malware uh, work that malware owners uh, react so they kidnapping our data whole system for the money actually in late uh, 2019 even SLT Sri Lanka Telecom faced this ransomware fortunately we have our own uh, backup proper backup system that's how we uh, rescue from that incident so ransomware to prepare those ransomware we have to have proper backup system okay so i hand over to priya to continue the presentation okay no, that, that that side is also myself right bots right bots are like zombie systems right zombie computers like third party control hold the system so network of bot is called the botnet so here that botnet owner controls everything in our computer actually they uh, use the backdoor type malware to attack our system thereafter they use those things so illegal things like uh, hacking for websites and blackmailing things or even nowadays for crypto mining even they use this botnet computers so i hand over this to priya to continue the session priya it's a point thank you thank you tushari so uh, we'll see what's happening where i is <clears throat> usually um while accessing online uh, content we may see the advertisements right <clears throat> those are called the um adware which mostly developed to attack the user uh, through the apps okay it can harm our devices and also it will slow down our system mostly it is aimed to um hijack our browser to uh, get the user system slowed down the next one Uh, crypto malware so crypto malware is also a malicious software it is uh, installed by the attacker to the victim's device so uh, it will mine the cryptocurrencies using the victim's computing resources but the main part is the victim will never know that something is happening in his system like that and then um uh, so uh, victims don't get the payoff while suffering severe losses due to this the next one uh then the root kit so root kit specifically this is um, uh, designed for the attackers uh, to intrude or enter to the system through a backdoor so one of the most um, famous attack we have heard of which is uh, in the history stuxnet so it targeted iranian nuclear facilities and it was created by usa and israel and later uh, they also lost the control over it the next one so the backdoor backdoor is a normal um, i mean a threat we all have come across so usually there are a normal authentication or authorization procedures right so uh, the backdoor is the thing which will never follow those normal authentication methods it will enter to into our devices and spoil it so it can spread via the malicious applications in our mobile devices or other um, smart devices we use in our day to day life the next one so i'll hand over to chamut can you proceed chamut chamut yeah hello thank you um next slide please next one oh um, next slide yeah um uh, in this in next few slides i will focus on the major data breaching incidents that happened in past recent years as you see in this slide it shows the major data breaching incidents from 2019 uh i took this data from uh, data from site is called information is beautiful.net if you visit the site you can see number of incidents from 2005 and see how the 
incidence increased when it comes to 2022. Uh, next slide. Yeah. Uh, so the first data bridge is Yahoo Bridge. It happened in yeah, in between 2013 to 2016. It bridged nearly three billion user accounts according to the statistics. Uh, the largest data bridge in history of one of that is Yahoo. Uh, it suffered for several years. Not only it's the biggest bridge according to the number of affected users, but also feels like a massive uh, one because of all headlines. Uh, the flood of ongoing news uh, coverage was understandable. It took the company to a long time to figure it out just how <clears throat> uh, big data it was dealing with. So news kept dribbling out. It turned out to a company was hacked by Russian spies, given the security breach and even criminal outlook. Uh, yeah. The next, okay. The next one is the other bridge happened in 2019. Uh, it, it bridged uh, identity and biometric information around 1.1 billion Indian citizens. The other bridge is the perfect example of a massive cybersecurity incident, uh, if ever there was one. The world's largest ID database, Adar, was established by the Unique Identification Authority of India in 2009. The database contains information on more than 1.1 billion Indian citizens, including 12 digit tonic uh, identifier number, fingerprint scans of all 10 fingers, and RA scans, name, gender, and contract information. Um, most Indians have an Aadhaar card, even though it's, uh, it isn't mandatory. However, the card is required when applying for state aid financial assistance by seller sim, opening a bank account, and rolling utilities like buys. The uh, let's see uh, the recorded early uh, the amount of data was the next one is the first American financial corporation happened in 2009 and 885 nearly million records were leaked the american financial corporation the largest title insurance provider in us exposed 885 million records the biggest data breach in 2009 real estate buyers and sellers partners up with first american <coughs> to uh, secure properly transaction sharing in depth personal and financial information with the company instead of protecting the sensitive data it collects the insurance company let it sit unprotected on its website accessible to everyone and anyone it have what it have what uh, how it happened was the database was first discovered in independent security journalist he tipped off about this major data breach by a Washington-based real estate developer who knows working with First American. He was the one who first noticed that First American's website was leaking records, potentially hundreds of thousands of them. He realized that anyone who knew the URL of a valid document on the insurance company's website could view other documents just by adding a single digit in the link. After getting no response from the First American, he got touched and on May 24th, he reported the news on his cybersecurity blog after that print file. Uh, right. Next slide. Uh, this is the Facebook data breach happened in 2019. Uh, nearly 540 million records were breached. During its 15 years of existence, the Facebook had more than its fair share of cybersecurity breaches with approximately 2.3 billion monthly users. Facebook collected 
and store enormous amount of data. Uh, it wasn't large scale cyber security related to this breach. It uh, was a social media giant's inability to protect the massive quantities of information it collects. A team of cybersecurity investigators at UpGuard discovered two databases on Americans publicly accessible S3 cloud services the below, that belongs to a Mexican media company. Uh, the following uh, data were breached like uh, 145 GB, uh, more than uh, 540 million records like comments, reactions, account names, Facebook IDs, at the <clears throat> pool of database or similar content, but uh, more detailed information. Next slide. Next one is the married data breach happened in 2018. Nearly 500 million records were breached. This is the most affected world largest chain of hotels, definitely stand up. Affecting approximately 500 million records among the sensitive credit card information passport numbers and classified as a major, major breach. One year after a leak was discovered, or remain unclear who was behind the fact that the stolen records have ended up on a dock. That with the fact that the Marid is the main hotel providing US military and government officials focused suspicious on Chinese state sponsor actors. Next slide. Uh, the last one is the Friends Finder Network data breach in 2016. Uh, breached nearly 412 million news accounts before the gravity of the Yahoo hack was published in, at the end of the year. The Friends Finder Network leaks was considered the biggest uh, amount of data breaches of 2016. Some 20 years worth of data 412 million records on the users on the adult entertainment and the network were exposed due to a malicious attack. The affected individuals were registered user of five websites under the Friends Finder network. Uh, the data breach was uh, six databases with information reaching back in 1996, launch of Friends Finder network. Hacker stole usernames email addresses, password, plus private and public keys for the company servers, source code of credit card processing, user management, billing database, scripting of internal IT functions were also breached. Next slide. Okay, so uh, I'll take this from yeah. here too. Thank you so much. Okay. So um, now, till now, we have seen what malware is and uh, the recent breaches which happen in the world. So uh, the most important thing what we have learned here is we have to uh, take the security threats more securely. So even the big governments or the large enterprises are being attacked with this threat. So how about the small business or the medium grade businesses? So uh, with the uh, IoT devices nowadays, the data we receive into the organization is increasing uh, exponentially. So we have to make sure the data what we maintain, maybe the organization data or the customer data, how it's being safeguarded without uh, being attacked by the attackers. So there should be the law and orders or the penalties to be made to the organization which fail to uh, maintain a good secure in their environment. So uh, the next one. And also we have to make sure the awareness, proper awareness and the uh, training uh, to be given to the staff in the organization. So now we'll see how we can prevent from the malware. The basic thing we all know is installing antivirus software. Not only installing, we have to make sure it is up to date. And uh, uh, whenever we are using the system or the specific applications or when we are connecting the external devices to the computer, everything will be scanned and then be used. Next one. 
So the firewalls. Firewalls, actually, we all know it, it acts as a barrier between the environment and to the system. So it usually filters out the desired traffic and let that uh, go into the network, right? So using firewalls will reduce the threat, threats and make our organization more secure. And anti-spyware, anti-spyware is capable of fighting spyware by scanning all the uh, incoming data coming into our environment. Uh, so usually it automatic scan, automatically scans the devices and the uh, system. The next one. So keeping the OS up to date, so we all know the OS providers uh, release the security patches now and then. As a user, we have to make sure that we are up to date and um, uh, we are upgrading with the uh, security patches. And secure network, uh, even though it could be our home network or if maybe we are using a private net, uh, public uh, uh, networks in the public. So we have to make sure always the transmission are happening uh, in a secure manner. We have to make a secure password to our home network and we have to, uh, we can uh, avoid using the common uh, Wi-Fi networks without the password, uh, possibly in uh, airports or maybe in the coffee shops. We can avoid uh, transferring the confidential data over that. And the strong password, uh, we all always make and forget the passwords, right? So uh, we have to make sure uh, it will not be guessed by a third party. And we have to make a secure password with the uh, hard symbols, numbers, with the combination of that. It will secure our network. Uh, the encryption, so we all discussed in the last uh, week's lecture, encryption is converting the data into a secret code and sending through a transmitting medium. And uh, the receiver will take it and decode it to read it. Right, so in that way we can send the secure data throughout the channel, and of course the backup files and careful clickings. That means while using the internet, we have to make sure what we are clicking, otherwise it will lead to a phishing attack. So um, that's all from our side. Thank you guys for listening from our end. So uh, we are pleasure to have this session and explain uh, or share our knowledge with us. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Team Sri Lanka. Kusara ma'am, Priya ma'am, and Chamot sir, and very nice presentation uh, given by all of you, and uh, uh, thankful to all of you for, for this nice presentation, and uh, all of three, uh, one by one given uh, on the security-based uh, presentation, so definitely uh, this is uh, helpful all of us for further uh, any uh, making a presentation, either thinking, either thought. Now, uh, session for uh, today's session, so just one minute.